one team out of the LPL and the tournament favorites are doing battle here on the Rift. And we heard from Solo and Wild Turtle. They said getting out of groups would be success for us. That would be a great world's performance getting into the top eight. For top esports, if you saw that tease, the LPL wants their third straight world championship and TES are first in line for it. And we see some defensive warding on the bottom side here with the little pixel brush from Top Esports and the hover there for the possible Lilia delayed invade. They went through with the early sweep to make sure there were no wards and placed a ward of their own. That wards ensures that they'll see if Top place one later into it and will be known for the start here for Santorin. As we said, Lilia can annihilate this Raptor camp because of the AoE and the burn in the kit. Also being able to kite very easily. This is a move from Karsa though, trying to answer, dashes over the wall immediately to try and get the buff for buff. I don't believe he was seen on his way over, but this is going to be level two versus level one. If Lilia shows up to fight for blue, Santorin did not burn his smite. If he's here on time and the blast plant lets him do it, Karsa is going to be outsmited. He's going to be outstatted. Two. Santorin knows the blue has been taken. He knows what's going on right there. And Karsa, you talk about level one to champs like leash. Kobe. Yeah. Well, it's going to reset. <laughs> but regardless, it is a full camp lead for Santorin. His entire jungle's up for him. Yeah, th and this very frequently can happen with Lilia. That's why people were so surprised that, you know, some of the results from play-in. Uh, but if you coordinate your level ones for it, flashing though. Already in big damage of Wild Turtle. Gonna get played backwards. Now be careful, Yunji. Yeah, he's down to 100 HP. And there's only cleanse on Jaculip. He cannot be summoner healed, but there's not enough damage to kill it off. Summoner's blown two down to the fly quest side, two blown on the top side. There's no more potion left here on Wild Turtle as well, and the sustain advantage will be on the side of Top Esports uh, if they're allowed to continue in this bottom side matchup because uh, there's plenty of regeneration in Set's kit due to the passive plus the healing from Senna. Uh, and with Jackie Love having his own biscuit as well, they will sustain the life advantage, but the minion push is gonna be the difference maker there as Wild Turtle and Ignar can try and get that one in. Nice hook right there. Cleanse comes through despite the flight. Jackie lives at 200 health. The flash, one auto! One auto would kill him. Wild Turtle does not pull through. He already burned the summoner spell, but that is still a ton of damage dealt there. It's another summoner traded for two, and FlyQuest, well, they are on a ward. Wild Turtle's gonna go for the recall. Ignar is hatching that one. They're gonna know he's sticking around. He's gonna need some jungler intervention down here on bottom side. Free. There are no summoner spells left. Ignar is the only one here. His flash is ready. He wants to make a play there with that threat. So we'll see after bottom sides have been cleared. Looks like Scuttle Crab should be in the hands of Karsa as well. He finishes that up. He uh, could make a pass through mid. So we're off the early cull recalls for both bot laners right now. Karsa gonna just make his presence known in the mid lane. Four camps down. Top laners trading back and forth. Stun comes back, and here comes a bit of damage towards Double PC, side. But Ignar is on the roam. Fl and Knight's gonna get hit for a bit of damage. The flash hook guesses wrong. Now on the top side, who's gonna get the solo kill? It's gonna go to 3-6-9. 1 0 to top esports. 3 6 9 draws first blood for himself on the Camille. This is going to be very, very devastating for the matchup on top side. Teleports are still ready, so Solo won't li miss out on any of the minion experience and get right back to it. Uh, but the early goal will fund the Camille build here, trying to get to that Trinity Force as quickly as possible. He goes with the coal for an extra investment. And he's trying to get some extra dividends out of that first blood, uh, investing it for the future. Here's another look at it. Did get the shield there for Solo, so he's feeling quite good. Got his extra W off, but 369 uh, is able to continue through them this fight, even with Solo flashing the stun. Yeah, better trading, better fighting by 369, despite the skill shot being dodged, despite tanking the storm for the shield and damage, it was still the better stats on the Camille side. So well done to 369, 300 gold lead, the top esports so far. Lanes in most places fairly equal. The CS deficit in bot lane is because there's still a wave to pick up for Wild Turtle and Ignar. But you've got Karsa slinking in right here. Solo flash list might very well be in danger. Stun's gonna be down for a while, but Karsa knows he's not spotted, knows he's gonna be safe. And Solo just getting whittled down the moment after he TPs in. Oof. And this is danger. Yeah, he, this is very, very dangerous. So dead. All right, he's got a fight with cars. He's going to get stunned up. There's all the burst damage you need. Already 2-0 on the top side. And top diff has begun, and the namesake of the team is already there. And this is something you can see from scouting the LPL. Karsa very often spends his time top triangle of the map, visiting Knight's lane, visiting 3-6-9's lane. And with the summoner spells blown up on the top side, plus the first blood taken, very nicely done for him.
It didn't actually take very much time at all. Sleeps into the uh, brush there for a lane gank for himself to capitalize on it. And this is going to be a devastating Camille. He's not rushing straight for the Trinity Force. He goes for wave control because he wants to affect the rest of the map. This isn't a, a tech you can make on Camille when you get such an early lead like this. A, an early Tiamat, you can annihilate this minion wave and look to make plays later. Camille, because of the range with your hook shot, can set up plays for the rest of your team so effectively. Speaking of plays, walking to the mid lane, but Power of Evil's already on the recall for Lost Chapter. Pretty decent first spike there. Same goes across for Knight, though, on Boots, and a revolver is going to feel pretty solid. Hex flash across the brush. Wants into this one. Ignar going to be shot up there. His flash is down, puts down the shield, but here comes the rest of the squad. A beautiful double root into the rest of the damage. Karza finds a kill. Meanwhile, Santorum's been picked off in the river as well. Top esports already 4 0 in six and a half minutes. The patience for 3 6 9 pays off. He waits in that line bush long enough as Santorin's clearing out the ward and they finally strike. Taking down Bambi and returning to the top side without losing too many minions. Well, this is about the way I think a lot of people expected this game to go. Top View Sports, I'll say it again in case you haven't paying attention, the tournament favorites, and you're already seeing big moves out of the top and jungle right now. Karsa able to lock down and get a pretty easy pickup here in this Mountain Drake. Bot lane farm lead has been going to Jackie Love so far, even despite those recall timings. It's kind of maintained about an 8 to 10 CS difference over Wild Turtle. That's been going pretty nicely, and Carson just keeps the farm going. Yeah, I mean, Top Esports have been on fire, uh, you know, this, this summer. They, they are the number one team from the LPL, the two-time world uh, defending champions back-to-back -back here. Plus, they also won the Mid-Season Cup, which, yes, we didn't have the Mid-Season Invitational, but that being stacked with top four teams from LPL and LCK is why so many people have top esports at the top of their rankings. FlyQuest now, yes, they are in a hole. They're gonna have to try and dig themselves out. You see Santorin looking to try and uh, you know hover around solo since he still does not have flash and he's in a vulnerable position up there. Okay, so for now, it's FlyQuest playing defensively on various sides of the map. It is actually some shove for Solo. He's got a small farm lead. He's not going to make it for three kills, don't get me wrong, but at least he's farming pretty well. Shoves in the wave, looks to roam. Maybe he can test the jungle a bit. Can't do much right here. Yuyun Jack going to spot the ward, and okay, not going to get much done. Control ward drops down, and he's not going to get that mid lane roam. Ignar was there first anyway. Just trading farm back and forth in the mid lane. Small farm lead for Power of Evil as well. You kind of expect to lose lane a little bit of the Kali. Mm -hmm. No big surprise there. We'll wait for the team fights for Knight to really turn on. Yep, and he's looking to use his ult. They find a root. They're going to find a sleep. They're going to find the ulti. Should be a pretty easy flay, but the ulti gets him out. The stun's going to land. He needs one more spell. Can Knight fall? Santorin wants in. Gets the Q. Jumps Ooh. in, but Karsa's there too soon. And FlyQuest cannot buy a kill. Karsa's still in the chase. Gets away from the Q. Hooked in by Ignar, but the rest of the squad is there. A nice pull. Land a kill for the support. And out goes FlyQuest, but for how long? Solo going to ult to safety, and another fight goes to to zero for top esports. Jackie Love on the roam timer from bottom lane. You see Wild Turtles alone down there at the turret, but Jackie Love, because he roamed towards mid, was able to arrive with the heals for Knight. He does not go down, saves his flash as well, despite getting chunked out and hit with that extremely long range stun. And because of TES just playing so well around that mid skirmish, they have exploded in gold lead here. Only nine minutes. They've got a giant gold lead plus the Rift Herald, which is guaranteed at least two more plates. And with top turret already down to only three plates left, you can also probably go get first turret bonus with that. Here's another look. Ignar, though, he's one of the players with the lowest duo proximity. That's time spent near your AD carry, so he roams incredibly, uh, incredibly frequently. He was able to get that hook to start it out, and POE did have the follow-up stun. But as we know, the heal came in. Knight didn't even have to flash. And TES, they have been sacrificing some minion waves, uh, mostly here for 369, roaming around to help make these plays. But the plays have been so worth it for them. So Top Esports are the best early to mid game team in the LPL. They have the highest gold lead in the league at 20 minutes at 1,400 on average. They are up 2,400 in this game in half the time. They are absolutely dominating. 
even above and beyond what they normally put forward as the best team in their region. So TES obviously off to an amazing start right now. The aggression, I think, will not stop. They have the most kills per game in the league as well, so they're going to probably keep this one going and wait to see as the top laners head to various side lanes before too long. We'll see just exactly what happens. And the fun part now is where do you go with this lead? When you have a Camille that is this fed that went for the tech for the early team mat to shove the lanes, um, teleport is coming back up right now, a few more seconds for 369, and you have so many playmakers. Level six now on set for you, Yanja. Um, Knight as well with the flash and ultimate ready has kill pressure for himself. So it's all about creating this opening here. 4369 to come collapse and you basically guarantee a kill with your Hextech ultimatum locking somebody in there as uh, FlyQuest are trying to create some openings for themselves. You see this continued renewed focus on vision through the river and through that bottom side uh, to try and make some plays off the thresh. Solo gets away from the stun, lands his W, but here comes the Hextech ultimatum you talked about and Karsa's now here as well. How are you going to survive this one as the you know. ult comes in for good measure. Karsa blinds him, looks for the rest of the damage there. Solo ults to buy some time. I mean, he makes it close. He makes it close, but 369 is too durable. The kill still comes through as this credits across the board. And their F-Herald is going to summon for likely the entire turret in his top lane. Yeah, that thing's gone. So FlyQuest, they have to try and make something out of this. They know that Jungler is top side, so Santorin's looking to make a bottom side play here. As you see the bottom turret on the minimap too, uh, Wild Turtle trying to force Jackie Love off of the turret and Ignar's got the lantern. Three shots good, second and third gonna go wide and the slows aren't enough to cut up for a flag. If he happened to guess correctly, maybe there is CC, but Jackie Love would have had the cleanse regardless. Three plates taken on the bottom side, it is good to get something back of course. But Shelly gets the second charge, top lane turrets at 20% and that turret's gonna fall before too long. All right, FlyQuest now, again, still overloading on bottom side since uh, so many resources from top were in invested on that side of the map. They do not rush on the Dragon, though, because they saw the resets. Uh, funnily enough, FlyQuest actually had the highest Dragon co control percentage of any LCS team, um, and they're heading here to Worlds versus Top Esports, who had the highest Dragon control for any LPL team. It definitely becomes a bit more troublesome controlling Dragon when you're in this big of an early deficit. So I don't expect those numbers to get any better for FlyQuest. And uh, Top Esports going to take what is theirs. And second Dragon picked up without much effort at all. And he's going right there, Car. So 100% kill participation on Dragons. And hey, pretty close on Champions as well here. Five out of seven. That's a pretty perfect score of, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And as Knight knocks down the top lane wave. Of course, Sola, who has at least been farming well, but he's 0-3. Doesn't have a lot of tank stats. He's going to play defense for a while down here. Probably go for more of a tank build. I'm not sure he can ever really duel the Camille or the Akali in a late game scenario. Is down a level. Jack Liv going to grab the plate, and then I love this. Let's the plate gold go. Then Yu Yunjia walks up to make sure he can control this one, but it means that he kind of lets his 80 gold go over to Jackie Love. More gold on the Senna. Mm -hmm. Farming Senna, one hit till Cola's done. That'll be good. Ignar wants in for this one. This is going to be a three on three. Flash is in, but Kars is already here, and the teleport's coming behind as well. About to be a four on three. A lot of CC coming across. He's sleeping, but Jackie lives there for the first kill. Knight has shown up as well. Picks up kill number two, and the rest of the squad shows up for good measure. A trade kill comes in. No longer a perfect game as Power of Evil finds a single kill. Knight burns rest of his ultimate, and a lantern going to bring Sula to safety, but the Hexical Vita comes across, locks up Power of Evil, Flash the way to safety, a hook by some time, and play backwards as well. The flash in, Yu Yunji can't quite get that kill. He's a 2 HP and Solo finds his second kill. Flash to safety, but he's stunned up by 369, and the kill will not quite come through. Two for two in that team fight. Honestly, that is extremely good for FlyQuest, considering the game state right now, where top esports have been steamrolling. They come away with two extra kills for themselves. And that is FlyQuest still looking for plays. As you mentioned during the play itself, though, uh, Top Esports were waiting for it here with Karsa in the brush ready. Regardless, flash in from Ignar. They try and make the play. He does land the hook, which forces the cleanse out as well. Santorin does immediately go down as Knight teleports in, uses the ultimate. But Solo here on the Volley Bear actually makes a, a huge amount of space for the team as Power of Evil is trying to run away. This Hexec ultimatum does interrupt the Lantern, but that just gives him an opportunity to turn there. He turns and focuses damage on Knight and Karsa, separating them, allowing them to get the extra kill onto Yu Yanja before having to flash away. 
Okay, so we look at the game right now, and it is a sad state for FlyQuest. 5,000 gold difference. Very obviously top esports favored. But you can see the team fight prowess there. Despite being 0 and 3, Solo mm -hmm. got more damage out in 369. He has been able to kind of survive, and, and this is really where he as a player has made his name for himself, is playing well from weak side. Gangplank was one of his more notorious champs, as well as a champ that you could just kind of leave on an island and despite the scoreline put out some decent damage. So he will be a key factor as one of the only tanks in the roster to do anything. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's, it's obviously a big uphill road for FlyQuest to get a comeback here. Uh, and top lane was one of the big things that people were worried about for FlyQuest, especially heading into this group with uh, you know a lot of teams that can focus on top side of the map. Whereas, as you mentioned, Solo has not gotten a lot of resources. Now, this all did kind of stem from losing the 1v1 initially to get the first blood for 369. Yeah. You know, and his flash being blown in that 1v1 opened the door for Karsa to go up there and, and opened the door for them to have so much focus. Um, but, you know, he is going for the cooldown reduc uh, reduction garage sale sort of uh, item build. I actually kind of like the Black Cleaver um, and the Iceborne Gauntlet build for maximum cooldown reduction for Volley Bear because it does give you a lot of team fight utility uh, and you can continue to try and force. You get a, plen you get a bunch of ultimates, uh, plus you get super low cooldowns so you're trying to have sustain with your W. Um, here we go though, first tower for FlyQuest is taken down and they escort Power of Evil back out. So FlyQuest still looking for these tri plays, trying to get some gold back for themselves off of the map on the other side. Of course, we are still at a 5,000 gold difference here, though yes, it has plateaued. That is a number you're happy to have pressed in the 17-minute mark here for Top Esports. They are three times, four times their LPL average. They are certainly running over this one right now. Third Drake spawns in just a minute. And FlyQuest persistent damage a little bit low here, so an Ocean Soul is brewing in the next six minutes, and it's going to be hard for FlyQuest to knock down into the top esports players if they do grab that one. Wait to see as the mid game looms just exactly how these fights are going to look because right now FlyQuest, yeah, that, that gold graph has moved pretty steadily down and right more and more in DES's favor. And I expect it to continue in that way, um, but if you're trying to, to hope for the upset here in one of these team fights, one of the greatest tools that FlyQuest have drafted themselves is the range of their crowd control. Uh, Lilia E. Uh, into a, a an R for a sleep can set up the long-range follow-up there from Jin, Thresh, and Syndra. Extremely long-range pick potential from FlyQuest. The problem is uh, that TES have so much vision control that it makes it very difficult for you to pull off one of those plays and for the team to be separated because if there are the rest of the members of Top Esports there, even if you snare somebody, it's going to be hard to take them down. Go. Dragon setup is here. The ward control very obviously in TES's favor, and they're just going to knock this one down. Cars is there on spawn. Control wards pretty much everywhere. I believe that one's not in the brush in the pit. It doesn't really matter. There isn't vision there regardless. <laughs> yeah. uh, so even, even the best, the very best in the world can make small mechanical mistakes, but not enough to matter here. We are five minutes from Ocean Soul to the 5,000 gold lead. TES looking to open up their world championship with a commanding win. And now, if you want to do strategy from the easy side of the match freak, yeah. <laughs> the giant lead uh, that TS does have, they're well positioned to play the entire map at once here. Teleports are coming back up for both their solo laners. Knight and 369 both can easily gain control in side lanes. And what you want to do is push in these minion waves that allow you to collapse into the FlyQuest jungle, thereby cutting off all forms of income for FlyQuest besides the minions that will trickle through to them. And that way you increase your lead while safely waiting for your big payout of your uh, Ocean Soul. If you want to get more spicy though, you can always go for dives and uh, you know try and flex your giant lead that you've got. Yeah, bone putting knocked off. You can see Solo playing the defensive side of this one-on-one, -on -one, but he's down to about 70% health, so not going to have an equal time unless his turret is active and part of that fight in a 2v1. Ward control coming through again and again for TDS to make sure 369 is safe to split push. Control with keep coming down. The invisible ones have been dropped in that jungle as well. And Flex do their best to try to sweep that vision away. Maybe at one point Centauran can make his way down without being spotted. But there's a two level jungle difference now off of Karsa getting so much farm as we've gotten into the mid game. It's going to be tough for those fights to even go well. Yeah. Honestly, as I said before, I think the best hope for FlyQuest is Santorin continuing to throw out these seeds 
as uh, at top esports, e if they decide to try and play the whole map like we're talking about, to try and um, you know starve you out, push all three lanes, then you just keep fishing with your seeds, try and find a pick on one of the members uh, that is furthest up, and there we go. That is a hook that is Glenn's not doing enough. He could go to sleep, but there's not going to be enough of a re-engage. It's going to be easily blocked shots right here, and he kites away because Knight could have hit him with the E. So no kills coming across. Mid lane turret's still going to fall, and that was one of their best chances. Flacco's coming and making that play happen, but all they get is a burn put Silver Sash. Yep, they're still proactive though, you know, looking for those possible opportunities. And I really like to see the cooldowns immediately expended when they do have a possible pick here. Um, even with uh, Karsa uh, being able to escape that one, FlyQuest do try and, and fight back for themselves. TES though, the Baron is up. Oh, teleport, so they're going for the 2v1 on Solo. Here comes the big fight right now. Solo cannot get out, gets away from the damage, but there's still a 2v1 as Knight wants in, wants the easy kill, claims it there. As a two-on-one kill comes down to the bottom side, these soul laners will not be stopped. They're both deathless. And they could probably get this turret as well. Uh, you take down Volibear, nobody else is in position here to really rotate quickly over to defend it. So that is a well-spent teleport from TES to get not only a kill, but the objective afterwards. There's a nice hook, there's a nice play backwards. Gonna be slowed up for a bit. The punch comes across, and now it's time to run away. And there's just not enough damage to kill a support with after with, without Aftershock, without a completed tank item. They just can't do enough damage. FlyQuest is bleeding out the map more and more. It's five turrets to one, it's 10 kills to two. The gold lead of nearly 8,000 continues to grow. Here we go, we get another look. Hexite Ultimatum is used to lock Solo in place long enough for the teleport channel to continue. Uh, you see Knight using it from the top side of the map as soon as they did see the Singer sewing on that minion wave uh, and knowing that they have this uh, pretty much in the bag there, no skill shot missed. Not a single one, so. Mid game going well so far, almost 22 minutes in. Ocean Soul in a minute and a half. And the gold lead has gotten worse every single time. I kind of punctuate it. Every dragon comes up, how how far is the lead? Oh, it's getting worse than last time. Okay, maybe the last fight was when you wanted to win. And Ocean Soul is now 80 seconds away. And FlyQuest, uh, unfortunately, not showing any signs of being able to stop those team fights. Yeah, and you can pull off a similar play to like we just saw from Top Esports in multiple ways. You don't have to use Hexic Ultimatum into Teleport to pull off the 2v1. Uh, you can easily gain control of uh, mid lane, push it out first, and have him just hover behind 369. You kind of trail the other split pusher. Uh, currently, though, they do play the 131, a knight on bottom side, pushing in that bottom minion wave, prepping it for themselves. And you see the Yanja here just sweeping and sweeping again. He's doing his homework. He's <laughs> doing the dirty work here, clearing all of the wards, making sure that everything leading up to this Ocean Soul is in their favor. Lantern 4 going to bring their jungler to safety as the bottom jungle now begins to belong to top esports. But a poke comes through, can't quite knock off the edge of Night Veil, but PoE will lose his Banshees from a janky love queue. And the contest with the bot river begins. 20 seconds till the spawns, teleports come in. It's time for the fight, the 5 on 5, but somehow Flyquest must find a way to win. Top Esports, though, in such commanding position. Knight waiting in a brush. Here comes the play. The dunk backwards brings in Solo. You can jig it the big stun across the front lines. That's going to be a stopwatch burned already. Knight's still safe. Finds Solo. Finds the first kill. Time for number two. Gets it as well. A double kill now for the LPL MVP. Gets in a wild pillar. Gets right back out. A clean two for zero. And Drake is ready to be claimed. Yeah, that's going to be Ocean Soul for Top Esports. See how quickly they can try and push in. Wild Turtle does follow it up with a snare, but there's just no damage left here for FlyQuest to try and capitalize. Sustaining two deaths here on both frontline members, they cannot commit to any further fights. And top Esports gonna claim that Ocean Soul, gonna claim the jungle for good measure. Wild Turtle gets eight gold, killing a Raptor. Nicely done, you got it back there, but honestly, <laughs> this has been can't keyboard diff. Hand diff and even uh, macro diff this and, entire game. And we did hear, uh, you know, from Solo in the video right before this matchup, his main focus was on learning from these top teams here at Worlds. Let's take another look at the replay though. Knight, uh, they had just swept that brush, so you knew nobody was in there. Yanja does get the ultimate into the face breaker, double stun for himself. And Knight kills Solo there after ulting over into the wall, saves the shroud so that. While he follows over uh, into the rest of the members of FlyQuest, he has the relative safety of the Shroud, picks up the second kill for himself without really overextending or needing to use his flash again. You can see the XP difference, of course. The gold one's easy to see in the top of the scoreboard. Thank you for the XP pop as well. Obviously, top esports earning more gold and, and XP income here as well. They've now got a ton of extra region as well, making fights harder. Now, a one-shot pick can still happen. 
realistically, if you're gonna burn someone down from full of the dead in two seconds, you're not getting much out of Ocean Soul, but that's kind of the only sort of team fight or only sort of battle Flyquest can find for themselves. Jack Live playing safely enough though, and look at this, a two-man attempt. Set jungle very, very tanky. Graves no problem as well. Solo wants in on a 369. He'll get himself the shield. And the rest of the squad is coming across, but a well-aimed hook shot gets him away. 369 completely safe, still deathless. He's on two and a half items. No problem at all in the side lane as the rest of TES show up to claim this Baron. Yep. Still inside of Flock of War, finding Scarlet Bloom burn. Now here comes the attempt for the fight. TP comes in for 369. And will they disengage will they play this one as well? A stun's gonna find him down to half HP. Ocean Soul will not reach until you deal damage to somebody, so knocks on a ward, get some health back up now. Baron is still being leashed. Cars is still hitting it. It's getting lower and lower. He can go for the smite pretty soon. Can Centaurin get his way in? Does not have flash. Here comes the team fight as well, though. On the front, they shut down Knight. Onto the back, let me go. Sleep on the UMG of the uh, Baron. Not gonna be picked up, so it's a one for zero. The flash Turtle. in! Turtle finds out the kill, but it's a two for one so far. In comes three, six, nine. And he's gonna want kill number two. On to kill number three. One more for Jackal finds it. The three for two team fight now, and it's time for FlyQuest to run. They stop the Baron, but the team fight still goes to top esports. Ocean Soul giving so much sustain to top esports that after losing those two kills they can still return to the baron here jungler dead on the side of flyquest definitely a valiant effort from flyquest fighting off that baron into the ocean soul uh, and they don't have too many choices left they're still gonna throw another hail mary here as poe comes around the side to try and check Jackie Love looks to spot out Power Evil. He knows that Syndra is flashless and has to walk away in a two versus one. He's still chasing. Two autos will kill, by the way. He's running quickly with the Yomus. But as the squad comes around, Santorum blocks him away. Knight gonna not climb this either. But Karsa able to very slowly knock down this one, picks it up. No sneaky Ws from this one. Wild Twitter will not get that steal as the Baron goes over in top esports if you to claim just about everything in this game. And while all the analysts, you know, completely expecting this domination from top esports, I think it is uh, necessary that we do see this performance in game number one because I definitely saw a decent amount of fans actually starting to lose faith in the LPL just off of LGD's performance in the play-ins. Yeah. But very clearly, um, as everyone was saying, not related to the entire region, not related to top esports. Firing on all cylinders here, performing at the very top. Let's take a look here though, FlyQuest, because considering the gold deficit that they are in and facing the Ocean Soul, uh, look at how they actually play this team fight to acquire a couple kills for themselves. So, Karsa with the Ocean Soul knows he can just keep leashing this Baron. They're looking for the opening uh, to try and get one of these key members here for FlyQuest, and once Knight decides to go in, he just gets immediately popped by Power Beam. And that's one of the big plays here for FlyQuest that make this as close as it even was. Turtle then flashing in, 369 says, I've got a flash too. Immediately flash follows to get that stun onto Turtle. In exchange here, we're back to live with the Baron buff. That was really clean. The hook shot flash, get it around. Ignar, mm -hmm. oh, Turtle keep him in this. Hold on, hold on. I'll clear your support first, then I'll finish you off later and get some all for it. That was beautiful. Now Solo dropped dangerously low, gets a shield, walks away, but He's almost tower dive Top lane's gonna fall for sure. Inhibitor laid bare on the top side. Knight still splitting in the bottom lane. Level 16 on the Akali. Very dangerous down there. As Top Eastwork looks to close this game out in about 30 minutes right here. 13 and a half thousand gold lead. Ocean Soul Baron buff still on for a minute and change. As Knight is just unanswerable. No one can handle this champion. Now into the top side, a bit of a root. 369 wants it again. That is a large chunk of health down. Immunes it with the ulti. Now on towards the damage. They will just barely knock him down. A one for zero. The re-engage on the UNG. They should knock him down as well. He flashes. Is it going to be enough? He dukes away. Burn He's degening and he will burn down Ludenzek with the last hit. So it's a 5v3 inside the base. But Flyquest have already lost two inhibitors. The re-engage comes in. They knock off Karsa's shield. They won't get much more for this one. And top esports still feel very safe. Knight could 1v2 this easily. Yeah, and they are surrounded by minions as well for FlyQuest. So the Baron buff here on three members of TES, they're still confident to keep up the pressure. Uh, one inhibitor left standing here for FlyQuest as they make another good counter punch to try and force TES out of the base, but Knight's not done. That yeah, goes all the way back to his shroud. Nice little play there. It's just for good measure. Just want to test you. Maybe burn a summoner. Nothing. That's fine. Out we go. Easy wave clear. Let's reset and play for the next one. Baron's gonna time out in 15 seconds. Ocean Soul lives forever. And hey, 
as the recalls come through and the respawns come up, Elder Dragons in 12 seconds. All right, so this is it. Do FlyQuest try and throw everything at this Elder Dragon yes. and just gamble the game? Because if you don't gamble the game, you have like a 0.1% chance to win by hoping for a big mistake inside the base. Yeah. Uh, but it's a, a lot bigger there around the Elder Dragon, which we'll get to after the replay. Here is them trying to take advantage. They got two members focused down from TES and were able to fend them off for a little while. But time is not in FlyQuest's favor because of the super minions that are going to be swarming into the base. They just have to rush it. You know, this is a, a very bad position to be in, but you have to force. Well, mid's been pushed in, so Knight could just go to end the game into the mid lane and force the retreat out from the squad as there's a lot of brushes to hide in. Cars are going to walk around, starts the Elder Dragon, and time is getting low. Time is getting lower and lower. A big pick right there nearly knocks down one. Knight's coming across with a flank. Already Centaurin is gone. How about the re-engage? Ignar flashing over the wall. Knight is on the chase. He's going to find some marks. He's going to find some gold. He's going to find some kills. There's the not the unstoppable kill for Karsa. Solo's next up on the board. He's not going to survive this one. Knight's going to be in range for a Q in a second. Gets it with the auto attack and a three for nothing cleanly and easily in the flag quest jungle. It's time for Top Esports to close this game out the way people expected. A commanding victory over flag quest. Top Esports the tournament favorites. 369 dies on the fountain for good measure. KDA stacks trying to come through. He will die again to the fountain. The sturdy member for FlyQuest will find a single kill. But Wild Turtle is left alone to watch as his base will drop. The turrets will fall. <laughs> and with one HP left, even the AD carry will live. The shots come through. They're not going to matter. Top Esports starts the World Championship group stage with a, with a dominating win over FlyQuest. Last year, Knight was the greatest player not to attend Worlds yet. And congratulations now as you are both at Worlds 